Hi, everyone. My name is Phil Wharton. I'm working with uh, Jim at the Eid Foundation. Uh, today, we have a scheduled uh, interview with Imad Shakan, uh, who runs the Chess Forum in New York City. And um, the reason I thought he was an ideal candidate to interview is because he's been a central figure in the New York chess community. He runs a chess shop. He uh, people can play chess there, uh, but he also sells chess sets and backgammon sets, a wide variety of sets. Uh, but people play there, and it, it's become, uh, when I lived in New York, uh, it was a very central, it was almost like a second home. Um, and so for some people, I think it was a first home. <laughs> but it, he was, uh, Imad uh, ran the shop like it was a family, um, and he was very generous and uh and inclusive with the chess community there um and i apologize for my four-legged uh, buddy back here but um we're still waiting for imad to show up hopefully he will log in uh imminently i just talked to him on the phone and he had customers i don't think he fully realized that this was a video interview um <laughs> but it might be more entertaining um to have him Oh, here he is. I'm going to add him to the stream. Hello? And there's Imad. Hi, Imad. Uh, hey, so, Ethan, how are you doing? Good, how are you? So Imad just joined us here, and uh, he's all masked up, and he's running his shop on Thompson Street. Um, and I was just telling the, the audience that, uh, in a way, you're a perfect uh, person to interview today because the Eid Foundation, and I don't think I've told you a lot about it, the Eid Foundation provides support for chess communities in, in countries and communities that don't have uh, much support. So uh, we send out chess sets and, and books to you know places in Uganda and South Africa and Nicaragua and, and, and various places like that. Um, and I'll just put on the screen like an example of a, let's see. See if I can. This is my first time running this uh, program. Here's a, here's a, a couple kids. I think these guys are from uh, Uganda, and that's uh, they're saying happy birthday, Papa Jim. Um, and so anyway, I thought Imad, and I'm going to put a picture of Imad on there, even though we can see him now. We can see him without a mask in a picture. Uh, Imad runs the chess forum, and uh, he was a big part of my personal uh, chess journey because. When I when he was working at the uh, chess shop, which is across the street from the chess forum, I started going there. And then when he opened his shop, I immediately uh, I was one of the people uh, exodus to uh, to the new shop. Um, and so it's always been well. I'll let Imad explain it, but it, for me personally, uh, I'll always have very fond memories of that experience there. And a big part of that was because of Imad's inclusiveness and just kind of embracing every aspect of the chess community. Um, and there's a very wide array of, of individuals involved in the chess community there. So uh, Imad, I'll just let you introduce yourself and then I'll, I'll go through, I have some pictures to put up, maybe we can comment on those and then I'll ask you a couple questions. Hi, my name is Imad Kachan and I'm the owner of Chess Forum in New York City. We've been here since 1995 and Phil is not one of the people who made the exodus, Phil is what we call a founding father. <laughs> Phil Wharton and many in those days, very young guys uh, moved uh, with the revolution uh, to Chess Forum, which later I discovered was actually a chess place originally opened by uh, Grandmaster Nicholas Rosolimo. This was the second original. The original place was on Sullivan Street that was opened by called the Rosolimo Chess Studio. And uh, then he moved, and in the original place, that's where Marcel Duchamp used to come and play him. In 1970, he moved to Thompson Street, where we are now. And uh, maybe I don't know if this will appear if I do this. Oh, there he is, Russell Lima. This is... Oh, wow. Yeah. And that's what you didn't have to put the area code before the phone number. Yes. Oh, I didn't know that. <laughs> yeah. uh, sorry. Yeah, this is when uh, this is 
the obituary from Chess Life and Review from October 1975. He passed okay. away. He fell from a building, supposedly. And his wife kept it running for a few years after him. Uh, then uh, they moved, the whole family moved to Boston, where his son Alexander now is a prominent professor at MIT. And every wow. now and then we have, this, yeah, I mean, life is a strange uh, journey. Every now and then we have his granddaughter, Catherine, comes from Boston. Whenever she comes to the city, she just walks in and says, Can I just look at my grandfather's old place? She looks around for a few minutes. <laughs> Uh, and she leaves, really. Uh, she doesn't play chess. Uh, her brother, Greg, doesn't play chess, but uh, uh, they have same, she said, they had a lot of chess sets after their grandfather passed away that their father inherited, and they used them as toys. But it didn't pass, skip a generation or pass to the next generations. Uh, and in those days, uh, Mr. Rosolimo, Grandmaster Nic Nicholas Rosolimo, relied on driving a cab during the day to support the business. Now we rely on selling, making a few sales. And that's the struggle we have these days in the age of uh, the, the internet and e-commerce and the big corporations, uh, making it hard for small businesses to survive. But uh, who knows, you might, even if you want to drive a cab these days, you have to do Uber took over everything. So yeah. the possibilities for a small business, mom and dad, or all the, chances that you might have to start a life are becoming harder. Yeah. Uh, his wife ran the place during the day when it was quiet while he drove a cab. At night when it got busy, people came after work, like in the days of Phil and all the friends. This was the end of an era where you come out of work and you go straight to the chess club or whatever hobby you have or whatever interest and you spend your evening there. Then the internet appeared uh, and wiped out all of that slowly, slowly, as it improved uh, the access online, the cable, instead of connecting through the phone, uh, people started uh, software at one point, they started staying more at home. And now you don't, with the advent of the smartphones, you don't need, you can live on your phone. None of yeah. this reality, what they call virtual reality, it replaced anything real. And I think anything meaningful that we enjoyed uh, in a certain way. Now I see uh, Harbinger of Doom was the TV show, the comedy TV show, Friends, where friends met at a coffee place, a coffee house, and hung out and had a good time and met people and played music and joked around. It was like every generation would say, life was simpler. It was a much simpler life. Uh, and uh uh, then by that era, the 1990s, all of that came to uh, as the new century. Computers appeared and software when it was a floppy disk, then CD, then DVD. And then came the cloud company, and were just basically leftovers from a bygone era. Uh, yeah, so I'm going to put it. This uh, is the situation we have been here. So while you're talking, I'm going to put up some yep, images. Yes. Some of them, some of them are from the chess forum. Um, I'm also going to put up a banner for. There's a couple of these images I t I took from um, uh, Good Good Run George's, um, and so I'm putting his his uh, his website up there. Um, so. I'm going to get back to the community part of it because I, I think that, you know, even though you're talking about everything has shifted and maybe much more so in COVID uh, where people, I mean, I'm, I, I think you, you still have customers in the shop, right? Uh, Imad, you still yeah, have- mostly uh, in terms of players, senior citizens and children. Okay. Hello? And so do you still have, do you, do you still, uh, yeah. are you t having, yes, I'm here. We can hear you. Um, do you still have uh, lessons there for kids? Uh, I yeah, know you had to cap. Uh, left up at, uh,
Doha. We had summer camp, not these last two years because of the pandemic. We hope uh, this summer, depending what the city allows us to do, uh, we will have a summer camp for kids. But we have three, four children. And seven days a week, you can just walk in and play free of charge any day of the week. Okay, so I have a picture up here. Uh, I think that's Rahim, and, and this must have been he recent because he has a mask on. 65 and over is one dollar, in between is five dollars an hour, or whatever you can afford. So I have a picture up here of uh, I think that's Rahim teach with a, a student. Anything. Uh, uh, but uh, yeah, that the big loss that happened in, in the process is, is uh, so you might it's, uh, it's, it's, it's uh, so you might it's hard on his, uh, yeah, while he's teaching. Uh, Imad, your connection, uh, I cannot hear what you're saying. If you see, the prices are behind if you want to know anything. Uh, so, was that uh, Rahim now teaches on Zoom? Okay. So, I pick a uh, picture up here of a couple characters. There's uh, Dick Brooks, who I know passed away. Uh, I think two years ago. Yeah, audio, uh, your audio is, we're not picking up your audio. I cannot hear. I cannot hear. Uh, uh, Imad, your, your audio, your connection is not great. Can you hear me? I can hear you now. Yes. Hello. Yeah, I can hear you now. Okay, now I can hear you. Yeah, the picture you showed before. Yeah, I think your connection is really bad because I can okay. barely. I can. I can only hear every tenth word you're saying. Is there a way to, to improve your connection? Oh. Because also I hear static here. How can I fix this? Uh, tell okay. Me how I well, can fix I don't it. know what your connection is like. That's out of my hands. But um, anyway, I'm just showing some pictures of uh, while you get the connection reestablished. I'm going to show some pictures. So here's one of a couple of people playing outside yeah. the chess forum. That must have been in the last year or so. There's one of Robert Plant playing there. Let me. Uh, and here's one of a um, famous TV show, which used, they got all their sets from um, from uh, Iman. Um, and here's a character that we used to see in the chess forum, who we also recently, recently interviewed. Um, Who I I I'm, I don't know when's the last time Imad has seen him. Um, so while Imad is getting his connection established, I'm going to show a couple pictures. Here's one of uh, some kids in Cape Town who we were able to. I believe this shot is from Cape Town. Jim Jim can correct me later, but um, I believe that's where this picture's taken, those are sets supplied by us. Um, and I think this is also Cape Town. I, th I believe this is Uganda, not 100% sure. Um, and here's, I'm gonna put the banner for the Chess Academy here. That's another group that we helped out. Um, pretty happy with their sets and boards. Um, so hopefully Imad will join us again soon. No. So, uh, the image that you see in Imad's, uh, section. Can you hear me? 
Yes, I can hear you. Yes. I could hear you very well in the beginning, so I don't know if you can reproduce that. Yeah. Yeah, how about like this? Well, other than the severe uh, close-up, I can hear you, but uh, can you Thanks. just keep talking and then I'll, I'll know. Yes, hello. I think it's a connection. It's not the microphone. It's the connection. It's your internet connection. Yes. Um, you. Okay. So if you could just expand on how you think, because I think your shop has always been part of the chess community in New York and all walks of life it, within that community have been supported by you in one way or another. Um, I mean, I'm an example of that. And, um, uh, Raheem, who we saw in the picture, is an example. Dick Brooks, who we saw in another picture. Uh, there's some, I mean, I could name like, you know, hundreds of people. So uh, for those listening, I for, uh, hope you can forgive us. Imad actually is trying to run the shop while he's doing this interview. So uh, I guess today he's a one man shop. But you don't have to plan. From Led Zeppelin. Yeah, Robert Plant. Tell him a little earlier there was a picture of Robert Plant. Yeah. And you know, chess things. I think I mean we are a dying breed, but I'm fighting for it because it brings people together. And any difference that you have with, yeah, that's Robert Plant from Led Zeppelin. Yeah. That, and he would be playing people like that. So you're breaking up again. I, I'm not he, hearing. Yeah, as you know, from the part who are your background we ask is to bring your chess skill economic uh, religious racial can you hear me now uh i can right now Hello? but i, I that yes Hello? the last few set the last few sentences i cannot hear So I guess we could, what we could do is uh, try to figure out. Um, this is it. Uh, that, you know, it's just a melting pot. That's why we should. Yeah, Iman, I might have to end the yep. broadcast early because I can't, I cannot hear um you're, you're I, I cannot hear complete sentences i think you have a connection issue on your end um either with your phone or the wi-fi or something um because I, I just simply can't hear complete sentences so i i think uh, unless you can see a way to resolve that i think i'm gonna just Uh, Imad, I'm going to have to uh, okay. end the interview because I cannot hear what you're saying. And uh, it kind of defeats the purpose. Um, okay. So thank you so much, Imad. Uh, you've been a great part of my own chess journey. And uh, I really appreciate you being around. Hopefully, if we do this again, we can Would figure out the internet connection. It? We can do it again. Maybe we'll Yeah, I'm just not hearing complete sentences. If you do, please let me know. Just uh, call or email, and uh, we can do this again. Yeah, I think I think it would work if you were on a computer rather than a phone. I think you're on a phone. Um, huh? But anyway, I really appreciate you taking the time it's out. I know you're busy. Phil. Yes. 
Oh, I am on the phone, yeah. Yeah, it's just uh, this has happened a couple times. Some some guests don't have a good internet no. connection. Um, so I'm just going to put the outro video on. Um, and this video the for those listening. Yeah. Okay, thank you, Iman. Thank you so much, Iman. Oh, Appreciate it. Um, so I'm, I apologize for those listening. Um, I would have thought he had a better internet connection there, but it sounded like he was on his phone and he might not have had the greatest internet connection. Um, so I'm going to, I'm going to, uh, just, uh, wrap up by, um, playing a short clip. A lot of people want to know exactly what the E foundation does, or at least uh, generally what the E Foundation does. And there's a little video that Jim made uh, that I'm going to put up that kind of explains it, um, it better than I can. So thanks everyone for being here and thanks for tolerating my first day as a broadcaster. And um, uh, Jim couldn't be in the studio. He's he's fine, but he was just uh, concerned that uh, he had the second shot of uh, the vaccine and he was concerned that he might not feel up to it. So hopefully he's doing fine. I talked to him earlier and he sounded like he was. All right. So thanks everyone. And I'm just going to put this video up and then we'll end the broadcast. Hi, I am James Eade of the Eade Foundation. Who am I and what is the Eade Foundation? That's the subject of this video today. Uh, I am a chess player from way back when. When I was in high school, I would win adult tournaments as well as high school scholastic type of tournaments. I got very good. Uh, I could even challenge grandmasters and I could fight them, uh, but I wasn't really as good as the, most of them. So I started to do other things. I would write chess books, for example. I wrote countless articles, five total chess books. Um, and I did a lot of other things like organizing international master tournaments, grandmaster tournaments, um, various tournaments of various types, uh, FIDE futurities, that sort of thing. And I did a lot of chess. And in 2018, the United States Chess Federation gave me the Outstanding Career Achievement Award. So that's a little bit about me. But what about the Eid Foundation? What's the Eid Foundation? The Eid Foundation is, was, just, was started to, to help build communities through chess. Chess is what I did. Chess is what I knew. This is the way I could help other people. And by sharing what I had, the resources that I had with those who did not have those resources, I felt that I could make a contribution to society, however incremental it was. It was a contribution. And so I found that this was pretty successful. And I, it was successful because I would get things like this. These are children in Uganda. These are orphans in Uganda sending me a happy birthday message. And I would get, um, you know, this the Divine Chess Academy was one example. They had to make boards, sets, uh, boards out of the paper. And so I could send them real sets and boards so they could have resources to play. I helped in Zambia, South Africa, and other places. And this is what the Eid Foundation does. We help seniors too. Senior centers can start up and, um, and hold. Because if we know that we, if they hold chess tournaments or chess clubs and start them, people keep their minds active. And if, even though it may not prevent something, a devastating thing like dementia or Alzheimer's, uh, it can delay the onset of symptoms. So this is part of what the foundation does. The foundation also has the Arthur Award. The Arthur Award is given for chess excellence. Someone writes an essay every year, and uh, this year's winner was Alexi Root from the University of Texas at Dallas. So these are some of the things that the Eid Foundation does. Help players, regardless of what language you speak, regardless of what country you're from, become part of the chess community. And if you're part of the community, you're never alone. So visit us uh, for more videos on the Chess Files, Fridays, 1 p.m. Eastern time. And I hope to see you then because uh, until then, let's stay connected, be part of a community. You'll never be alone.